Good morning and welcome to Morning in the Mountains on the Mountain Fun Live channel. Got a great show just ahead for you. Want to remind you of a couple of road closings and the most important one for visitors is Cades Cove Loop Road. That's closed through February 29th. Now the reason for that is because of repair work to the Boat Mountain Tunnel on Laurel Creek Road and that road will open, all those roads open again on March 1st. Now you'd probably heard about Catalucci having some road work. They've postponed that. Great Smoky Mountains National Park announced the expected closure of the main access road into Catalucci has been postponed and no rescheduled date for that as of yet. And that's a look at the roadways. We'll get on with the rest of the show right now. And that's traffic on the Mountain Fun Life Channel. Good morning, it's Kira and Savannah with Morning in the Mountains, and today we are here with Dominic at Vol Magic Wash LLC, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about a really cool package that they have here. What can you tell us? Good morning, ladies, I'm glad to have you all. Hey. Um, well, I just wanted to let the folks know that uh, we have a, uh, uh, we're under new management, have been for a couple years now. We uh, have a whole brand new Fast Pass program. We have a full inside detailing program now. We also have a new ceramic watch, which I'll go through with you guys in just a little bit, and we have our new gift card program for the holidays. So ladies, with this gift card program, we'll start there right quick. If they come in and they purchase a 20, 40, 60, 80, or $100 gift card, then they will get X amount of dollars more. So if they, so just to, just to give you kind of an illustration, if they get a, if they buy a $20 gift card, they're going to get $25 on that gift card. Okay. And that is spendable at all locations in the shop. They can use it in the loo, they can use it in the wash, they can use it in, on all the amenities that we have here. So same, same for the 40. If they get a $40 card, it's going to be $50, $60 card is going to be $75, $80 card is $100, and then a $100 card gives them $125. So they're going to put $25 more in their pocket today. Wow with that gift card program. Awesome. So please come out and see us and then let us sell you these gift cards. They're great for if people want to get oil changes, great for Christmas presents, birthday presents, you name it. And they can use it, like I said, in any amenity that we have here. Awesome. All right. Now, if they are going to use it at a car wash, we have also for our amenities on the property, we have free trash pickup or free trash disposal, rather. Plenty of Windex, towels, anything that they need. Vacuums are free. And all they got to do is purchase their car wash. If they didn't purchase a car wash and they want to come by and use our vacuums, they are more than welcome to do that as well. Awesome. Well, okay. thank you so much for sharing all of that. We're having a great time here at the Vol Car Wash LLC. Thank you so much, Dominic. <laughs> you are <laughs> Back welcome. Back to you Savannah. guys. When I became disabled, I lost my ability to work. It was then I knew I should have called the Garza Law Firm first. At Garza Law Firm, we want to end your frustration and strengthen your claims so you can have the disability benefits that you need. The Garza Law Firm, let us help. Want more Mountain Fun Life? We are now streaming through Roku. Roku is a device that enables you to stream entertainment to your TV through your internet provider. The starting price is only $29, and you can purchase one either online or through your local electronics retailer. It's easy to use, and you won't have to worry about missing any more Mountain Fun Life episodes. Mountain Fun Life, guiding your adventure. It's morning in the mountains on Mountain Fun Life. Hi, I'm Frank Murphy with Jim Johnson, Kira Cup, and Brad Lovett. I think today is the end of one of the Christmas seasons. You know, today is the day we would celebrate Three Kings Day if Three we Kings were in day. Central America or even in Los Angeles. Many or Armenia. Today's Armenian Christmas. Armenian Christmas. Oh, Orthodox Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry yes. Christmas. So how's that going for you? It's going great, but Frank. It's not Christmas anymore. It is, because Christmas <laughs> tide, there's different things. There's Christmas season wraps today. Christmas tide goes all the way till February 2nd. And you are still the only person I know I who talks about that. I have researched this recently, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad. some of my, my Polish friends, I've got a friend, Father Martin, who is from Poland. He says, oh, in my country, we celebrate all the way till February 2nd. Guess what? What? I'm Polish. Boom. Boom. Oh, February 2nd, baby. Which, yeah, shake on that. Because that, not coincidentally, is why Groundhog Day is on February 2nd. I know, you said that a while 40, back. 40 days after Christmas. Look at that. Here's the news with Brad. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> what we're going to talk about is some needs that Great Smoky Mountains National Park has that you can help with, courtesy of Friends of the Smokies. 
Now, one thing they're looking for is support for our friends at Appalachian Bear Rescue. Since it is Bear Monday, after all, mm. each year a number of orphan or injured park bears are treated and housed in the nonprofit ABR Center in Townsend until they can be released back into the park or, or wherever they come from. Sometimes they even come from out of state and they're released wherever they came from. Those are tourist bears. They, we welcome tourist bears from out of state. Yes, the, uh, we do sure. that. Yes, We're but, we, but we send them back home eventually. Do we do? Yes, we do. We, oh. we send them back to as close to where they were found as possible, even if that's Louisiana or oh, okay. Arkansas or right. Kentucky. Right. Canada. Well, the cool thing about Appalachian Bear Rescue is there's very little human contact. They keep the bears isolated and even have, I think, a fake bear arms. And, you know, don't they do that? It's kind of trying to trick the bears into thinking they've never come into contact with humans. Very subtle. Maybe that's the baby contact. ones when, they, when they're babies. That's it. I didn't know yeah, that. I that's so. very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. I wonder if it works. They've well, had so far, it's worked. <laughs> <laughs> They've actually just released a few not long ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah. uh, there, so some of the bears say, normally this time of year, they're releasing the last ones, and then mm -hmm. time to start over again, basically. Well, I am still worried about Planet of the Bears, but we'll see. Planet of the Bears. These, these don't seem like the bears that are taking over. I think Appalachian Bear Rescue is teaching the bears to go back to their ways and not take over our ways. That is the point, yes. Yeah. Also, trying to reduce backcountry bear problems with food storage cable systems. Now, each backcountry campsite and shelter has a pulley and cable system, which campers are required to use to hoist their food and packs out of the reach of bears for increased safety of both visitors and bears. Each year, a number of these systems are damaged through use or falling trees must be replaced, and that's about an $8,000 bill that they're looking for uh, donations so, for. So far, the bears have not figured out how to use the pulleys to get the food down, is what you're saying? Yet. But they so will. Far. All right. They will. Well, they'll team up with somebody oh, else. They'll, 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 get, they'll get somebody to help them, like the squirrels. Right, those, yeah. the squirrels are very knowledgeable. They'll get, yeah, they're good at bird feeders, mm -hmm. so I'm a little concerned They're about good at those. cracking open nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> they also are going to be raising funds to enable wildlife bear, the biologists. The bears are raising funds? Or the bear? No, oh, the no, bear rescue. Fr friends bear. of the Smokies. Because once actually. the bears start using currency, it's all over. Yes, <laughs> like I would think so. I saw one with a sign once. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it might have been a statue. I hope so. The, these funds will enable wildlife biologists to purchase new and or refurbished old black bear GPS radio collars. Mm -hmm. Now, the collars are used when DNA analysis is needed to track bears suspected of a bear attack or other significant human bear interaction while we wait on confirmation of matches. And also, they're building a new Bearwise digital messaging system. And these funds will be used to partner the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency as part of their Black Bear Digital Messaging Education Program. Okay, so as long as, I think I'm a little concerned eventually that the bears will hack into the IT system and, and put up, it'll be like the Chick-fil-A billboards. You know, feed more bears is what it's gonna say. <laughs> so anyway, I'm concerned about that. But we do <laughs> want you to come. You can go to see a bear at Obergatlinburg, I think. That's a city yeah. that to see a bear, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're rescues too. They're not just random bears. That, they that just pass through yeah. to learn how to ski. Because they will. They will learn how to ski. Before long. I think. That's my theory anyway. Well, anyway, we can save you money on great attractions like that when you contact our Mountain Fun Life Best Deals at 865-978-1152. More on that coming up in the show. You're watching Morning in the Mountains on Mountain Fun Life with Brad Lovett, Kara Cup, Jim Johnson, and I'm Frank Murphy. Do not go away. It's January 6th. It's Orthodox Christmas, which I am insisting on celebrating all the way through to the end.
It is morning in the mountains on Mountain Fun Life. Frank Murphy here, and today speaking with Jeannie Lee Palaganis, who is the general manager of the Inn on the River in Pigeon Forge. Welcome, Jeannie Lee. Thank you. Glad to be here. Happy to have you. Now, before we get too start deep into this, I want to point out that on the Facebook page for the Inn at the River is a fantastic video that shows what we're going to be seeing during the course of 2020, the new uh, remodeling coming in. So let's roll the video and take a look at the e Hi, I'm Jeannie Lee Palaganis. I'm the general manager here at the Inn on the River. And I'm really excited to let you know that we're about to do some unexpected upgrades for you guys. I know that most of you are thinking that we probably don't need to upgrade, but we want to stay ahead of the game. The biggest change you're going to see in 2020 is going to take place on the outside of the hotel. As you can see from the rendering, it's going to be quite extensive. It's a arts and crafts theme. We'd like to also share with you some of the other changes that are going to take place. Please follow me. We're gonna be doing some things in our breakfast area. That's one of the areas that we seem to have the most people gather around. And so we are looking to, to make that a, a more welcoming place. The kitchen's going to be expanded. The entire line for serving is going to be replaced with all brand new cabinetry with drop-in pans that are going to be self-warming and should provide a much more enhanced guest experience. While many of you have had extremely pleasant experiences dining out here on the patio with the view of the river, we want to actually enhance your experience further. What we plan to do out here is we're going to enclose the patio with major large garage doors so it will be completely confined during the winter season but still with a major view towards the river itself. In the summers we'll have the doors up and they will remain up nine months of the year. We can probably use them like that. In our rooms we're going to do some remodeling with the bathrooms and make those more user friendly, more eye appealing. We're going to demolish the bathroom that you're looking at right now. While adequate, it just doesn't meet today's needs as far as we're concerned. We will be retiling the floors, we'll be retiling the walls, and we will have a fully tiled shower area enclosed with glass partitions. We have upgraded all of our furniture and it's all new within the last 15 months. From there, we're going to do some trim out work inside the rooms. We're going to replace all the carpeting, all the mattresses, and all the box springs. Wow, it's kind of like you've got your own show there, Jean Lee. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be beautiful. It really is. We're really excited to, to see it all come to, to pass. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but when you drive by the Inn on the River currently, it has the, the charm of like a 1990s dorm building on campus. But just like colleges all across America, they're tearing down those older buildings and replacing them with show places. You're doing the same thing. It's going to really look it's actually going to fit in better into the neighborhood. It's going to look much more a part of what's going on. Yeah, when you drive by, you can almost miss us because it, it blends in there, but yeah. we're hoping to make it a real eye-catching. That's what I guess what I meant by fit in, not blend in, but it's, you're going to notice it because when you drive down the parkway in Pigeon Forge, things pop at you and yeah. now you're going to pop at us. Yeah, and we're really wanting to make the outside match what's inside because we've done a lot of upgrades and yeah. remodeling inside but you you don't see that when you're just driving by yeah well i mean the details of things like the bathroom everyone expects now when you go into a hotel to have a luxury shower experience which you're going to have um and all of the other wonderful things and i'm also excited i don't know if it was in the the video but about the uh, garage doors for your outdoor patio where you get to sit and alongside the river yeah. year round because you'll be able to close the doors in the winter, obviously keep us warm, but then throw them open nine months of the year. Yeah, it's such a beautiful, relaxing atmosphere out there on the patio, but right now when it gets cold, you, you really struggle to sit out there and enjoy yeah. the wildlife, but now it'll be available all year long. That's really outstanding. So how long have you been with the Inn on the River? This is my ninth year. Uh, they're a little independent hotel. Um, yeah. And so I came aboard the first year that they started. And That was part of the story is the owners, when they took over, decided they were going to break away from the national franchise route and have the independence to do whatever they want to do with the hotel rather than be restricted. Yeah. And we're actually uh, Pigeon Ford's number one hotel voted by tourists in the area. So oh, fantastic. we're just trying to give them more than they're anticipating when they come and see it, stay with us. Now, we 
actually, when you're coming in uh, from the interstate, you actually cross the Pigeon River twice. The first time when you're crossing into the Pigeon Forge city limits, and then it's the second time when you cross the river. That's where you are. So um, you're kind of near the Christmas store and the Five Guys and right. other, those landmarks, right? We're right at the heart, uh, yeah. right before you actually get into the heart of Pigeon Forge, right at red light number three. That's a perfect way to describe mm -hmm. it right there. So you are so close and so convenient to uh, all the fun that is in Pigeon Forge. In fact, we're, we're neighbors because our studios are just yeah. a stone's throw from you as well. Yeah, it was a short drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Inn on the River, what's the best way for us to find you and make our holiday, or, or excuse me, I'm using the, the European term, our vacation plans for 2020? Well, you can always call direct or you can um, go on our website, myinontheriver.com. Okay. Uh, we also have a Facebook, so you can look us up there on Facebook and, and there's so many different ways to get connected there. Beautiful. Well, Jeannie Lee Palaganis, thank you so much for coming in and sharing the story. I hope you come back as construction progresses. Actually, what we need to do is send uh, probably Savannah and Kara over there to get yeah, an update as absolutely. the construction progresses. Yeah, right. we'd love to have them, and thank you for having us. All right, you're welcome. This is Morning in the Mountains. You're watching Mountain Fun Life. More of the show right after this. Good morning and welcome back to Morning in the Mountains on the Mountain Fun Life channel. Let's take a quick look at the weather forecast and seasonal temperatures for January. And we have highs usually around 50 near the attractions and colder up in the tops of the mountains in the higher elevations. So look for sunshine for the most part, 50 degrees today, and we'll have lows in the upper 20s. But that's about what we expect this time of year. Can't tell you really about snow at this point. We're often asked if I come on vacation on a certain week, Will I have snow? Well, of course, nobody really has any idea because things are always very changeable here in East Tennessee and the Great Smoky Mountains. That's a look at the forecast. I'm Brad Lovett, and this is the Mountain Fun Life Channel. Being a successful business is a lot of work, especially when you have to design your own media projects and advertisements. Let us take care of your media needs. We offer a large variety of services, such as photography, videography, print magazine, live streaming, and so much more. Contact our marketing today for a free initial consultation. Email marketing at mountainfunlife.com. We look forward to working with you. I'm so excited about celebrating Orthodox Christmas on this Monday, January 6th, that I practically forgot about what today really is. It's Morning in the Mountains on Mountain Fun Life. Jim Johnson's here, Kira Cup is here, Brad Lovett is here, I'm Frank Murphy. Hey Brad, what's today? It's Bear, Bear Monday! Monday. <laughs> See, Good job. We all need to do that together. We do. Where See, we in our first buddy? segment, we were talking all about bear rescue, so I got out of whack thinking that it's just, this whole day is going to be all bear stories, but do you, is it a special bear story now? Because we've got the bear on the wall behind us, That's that means something's up. He's over here going. When we have the bear on the wall, oh. we have a bear story. All right, that's how I'll know. There is our designated bear back there. All right. He's so soft. Well, a couple weeks ago, around four on a Sunday morning, Lieutenant Doty with the University of Tennessee Police Department notified TWRA Wildlife that there is a bear making its way through campus. Okay. All right. I, it's Planet of the Bears. The bears are taking over. Now they're trying to get higher education. They just want to go to school. You're, you're telling me that the bears are now trying to go to UT. They've gone. They've shown up at UT. I think for the where the bear was found, he wanted to play baseball because he got stuck inside Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Well, I mean, the sports scholarship is probably the best way for a bear to afford college. That makes sense. But he's at the wrong baseball field. He should be at the Smoky Stadium. Right. right? It's so much closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but he's trying to get, you know, he's got to work his way up, play college I ball, so, I guess. Right. And then yeah, you do that. There's a process, Kara. There's a process. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, because this bear first, I mean, he's got to learn he, she, he's got to learn how to read and write. 
<laughs> kind of learn how to <laughs> some fine motor skills. But I think they're headed that direction. <laughs> they're getting there. You may have heard there was classes on rope retrieval. Right. I mean, they already know how to get into uh -huh. cars. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Yes. Exactly. They got to learn how to the pulley system. Yeah, the whole bit. It's important. I think prop right. door is open. I, I've seen them do that. They can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. He's a tool to do that. So uh, the TWRA, our friend uh, Matt Cameron, I was interviewed on the news about this. But other his, the other agents showed up and they um, what did they do to the bear? They captured him. They they captured the bear, and he was well, he or she was removed to some place in the woods. Now I saw the picture of the release. Looked a little groggy. Looked around and said, "Like, where's Jason's deli? <laughs> <laughs> Where you move me?" <laughs> yeah, the bear. The bear did look a little. It had obviously been uh, been tranked mm -hmm. <laughs> when they they let him or her loose. I think they said it was in Blunt County, maybe or somewhere on that you know deep into the Smokies mm -hmm. into a certain bear area where they're trying to tell the bears, "Go, you live here now. <laughs> you don't live downtown. You don't go to college." It's, a, it's bear discrimination is what it is. But. Really? But the wildlife officers responded to the scene. They were able to cr tranquilize and remove the bear. Okay. Well, and that's so the bear good. is back in the woods yeah. where the bear belongs. Pretty soon, soon the bears will just go to the moonshine tastings, and that's how we'll try and go. Oh, my goodness. Right. Oh, my goodness. I can only imagine. <laughs> well, I lived on campus years and years and years ago, you and I could bear? not imagine walking out of my house down there and seeing a bear. I don't know what I'd have done. I'd been like... Been well, yeah. at that time, I at might four have in the morning. Come on in, <laughs> four o'clock in the morning, and it's a Sunday morning. So obviously, the bear's been out late Saturday night. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So if you now, if you were late Saturday night on campus, and then you saw a bear, I I would say I probably would have invited him in, thinking he was one of the one of my college buddies and or something. This bear is how the Come bears decide they want to be join the frat. <laughs> well, most of the most of the students were out of town for the holidays, so the bear pretty much had the whole strip to so Oh, all right. Oh my okay. gosh. Well, then that's all right then. I'm just I'm concerned that the bears are trying to take over East Tennessee, and eventually the world it's like Pinky and the Bear. They're not taking over. They're just trying to live the American <laughs> dream. You know, go to college, get married, have some cubs. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, I like that. An that's a better answer. <laughs> yes. All right. I think I think they're going to try to learn all the. The you know science and the nuclear physics and all the other stuff they teach down there at UT. Yeah. That's what I think. All right. Now I had one serious and tragic wildlife story, and there was a reward being offered actually for someone. Did not happen in the national park, but happened you know in in East Tennessee or in Tennessee anyway. And that was someone had just indiscriminately killed an elk. Oh. oh. And yeah, that's uh, not not allowed, obviously. So there's a reward being offered for that. Mm. And yeah, they're they're trying to wow. put all this effort into uh, rebuilding the elk population, so that's not a good thing at all. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. All the right. The Campbell Outdoor Recreation Association, the Pine Mountain Longbridge chapter of the National Wild Turkey Federation, offering that reward. Uh, an elk biologist from TWRA responded to a call about a dead cow elk in Campbell County, and that obviously not a good thing. The 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 elk was collared, so being tracked and so oh boy. All right. Well, I'm. Sorry to hear about that, but we'll it's be back worse. with uh, more of the show coming right up on Morning in the Mountains on Mountain Fun Life. Mountain. This attraction has it all, whether you're two years old or 90 years young, with hundreds of beautiful tropical birds and thousands of flowers, plants, and trees. Folks who visited our park have said, I've never seen this many birds in one place. This must be what the Garden of Eden was like, the most beautiful and peaceful place I have ever been. These gardens rival the best, the best value in the Smokies. You'll want to visit Parrot Mountain and Gardens. Call or visit us online. We'll see you there. Right the board. It's Morning in the Mountains. I'm Frank Murphy. Time to take a look at sports with our Mountain Fun Life Sports Director, Rich Haley. And there's still more bowls. I thought we were done with bowls. I thought it was time to wash the bowls. We are almost <laughs> done with bowls. Are you saying you've had enough of bowls? I'm saying the dishwasher bowl is a, <laughs> would be <laughs> appropriate, or the bowl dishwasher at this time of year. But well, we don't have a dishwasher bowl, but we do have the lending tree bowl. That's not real. That's real. Well, I know it's real because you've got a logo on yes. the wall behind me, but I mean... Okay, what is it? 
It started off as the Mobile Bowl. Naturally. Naturally played in Mobile, Alabama. So oh, not sense. like uh, a mobile that you put over no. a baby's crib. No. Okay. So they got lots of different sponsors over the year, including yeah. GoDaddy. It used to be the GoDaddy Bowl. I vaguely remember the GoDaddy Bowl. Yeah, so does GoDaddy. That's why they don't <laughs> sponsor it anymore. So we have it now as the Lending Tree Bowl. The Lending Tree. In Mobile, and it's on ESPN if you want to watch it. Regular, like ESPN 1? ESPN, just ESPN, because there's right. not much else going on. There's no cornhole tournament they could run instead? <laughs> All right, sure. sure. So, do you want to know the teams that are playing? Not really, not but, really? You, but okay. you may as well say it, because we've got a little more time to fill in this segment. Okay, so we've got the Miami Red Hawks out of Miami, Ohio. Okay. Not Miami of Florida, Miami not of Ohio. Miami, Ohio. Okay, and they're taking on the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. All right, so how many, there's other Louisiana teams that we know. Yes, there are. And this isn't one of them. This isn't one of them. Because <laughs> we know LSU, and LSU. we know Louisiana Tech. Yep. And now there's this other one. Yes, just Louisiana. Just Louisiana. Just Louisiana, the and Ragin' Cajuns. Ragin' Cajuns of Louisiana. Yes. Where's the game played? Mobile? Mobile, Alabama. Still, they kept it in Mobile. They kept it in Mobile. They changed the name. They but lost. They kept it in Mobile. They lost GoDaddy, and they lost whoever else, but now they've got Lending Tree. It's still in Mobile. Yes. And the good news is, after this, there's only one more bowl game. Oh, that's the big one. That's the big one. That's the big one next Monday. So we have a week to wait for that. Yes. All right. To be eagerly anticipating it. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, I was happy. I've got more um, Clemson friends than I do Ohio State friends. Yes. So that was good. Yes. So I'm okay with that. Yep. And Ohio State, word for the future, if you can't score touchdowns, you're not going to win a bowl game. Oh, all right. That's all there is to it. All right. That's, we're looking ahead to next Monday. Yes. But for right now, there, what time is this game on? It's probably already it's, oh, probably already over. It probably started at, what, 8 or 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock this morning? No, no. It's an afternoon game. starts at 4. <laughs> Why would you? Today's like a regular work day. Why would you have an afternoon bowl game at 4 o'clock? Because that's 3 central. Yes. So they're starting at 3 o'clock their time. Oh, I know why. That way they don't have to pay to turn on the stadium lights. <laughs> They'll get the game over before sundown. It's just to leave extra time for tailgating after the game. Curfew is what it is. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for that sports update. Absolutely. With this imaginary <laughs> bowl game over here. <laughs> it's real. I don't know. It's morning in the mountains. We'll be back with more of the show right after this. We now have our own magazine. Our prints are located in shops, gas stations, hotels, ballparks, all over the Smoky Mountain region. We offer a concierge service for cabins, hotels, resorts, and individuals. A portion of any of our services or ad space may be applied as ticket value to the cost of any service or ad you book through us. Contact our marketing today for a free initial consultation. Email marketing at mountainfunlive.com. Well, you've been watching Morning in the Mountains on Mountain Fun Life for on this Bear Monday, also <laughs> Orthodox Christmas, which I will keep mentioning. <laughs> I'm here, Frank Murphy with Brad Lovett, Kira Cup, and Jim Johnson. You have a bear memory, don't you? I love that. Oh, when I was a little kid, five years old, um, mom and dad was telling me about it, where we were through Yellowstone National Park and a bear came up and went, Rah! That might be why I do that all the time. Because you've seen it up close and personal. It's in my memory. As a five-year-old, a bear did that to you through your car window. Through the car window. Mom and mom or dad rolled up the window real quick, and when they rolled the window up, the bear went, so. uh, For those of you who are on Cure's age, this is a pantomime symbol <laughs> for rolling up a window because in the olden days, uh, you didn't just push a button and the window didn't go up automatically. You had to manually crank the window to get it to go up and go down. I had no idea that that, that was such a thing. It was. was it I, I'm so was young. <laughs> Wait, uh, do they still make <laughs> manual windows in cars? They do. They do. Right. If you get a basic model. Basic models. Okay. Yeah. 
but <laughs> I'm still funny. I'm surely not going to call you basic it's under any circumstances. You better I, not call I, me basic, I, right? <laughs> I know better than that. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> this is your basic morning show on Morning in the Mountains on Mountain Fun Life. Check us out on Roku, Facebook, and YouTube, and join us again tomorrow.